Welcome to a lesson on four fundamental differential equations and their solutions. A few equations appear often, and it is useful to just memorize what their solutions are. Let us call them the four fundamental equations. Their solutions are reasonably easy to guess by recalling properties of exponentials, sines, and cosines. They are also simple to check, which is something you should always do. First such equation is dy dx equals ky for some constant k greater than zero. Here, notice y is the dependent and x is the independent variable. The general solution for this equation is y of x equals c times e to the power of kx. And let's go ahead and verify this is the general solution. To do this, we need to verify that dy dx equals k times y. We begin by determining dy dx to differentiate c times e to the power of kx with respect to x. We do have to apply the derivative formula shown here on the right, which includes the chain rule. The derivative of e to the u with respect to x is equal to e to the u times u prime. This indicates that dy dx is equal to c times the derivative of e to the power of kx, which is e to the power of kx times k, which we can write as k times c times e to the power of kx. And now to determine k times y, well k times y is just k times c times e to the power of kx, and we're done, we've shown dy dx is equal to k times y. Next we have dy dx equals negative ky, for some constant k greater than zero. The general solution for this equation is y of x equals c times e raised to the power of negative kx. And again, let's go ahead and verify this. For the first step, we'll determine dy dx. Applying the chain rule, dy dx is equal to c times the derivative of e to the power of negative kx, which is e to the power of negative kx times negative k, which we can write as negative k times c times e to the power of negative kx. And now let's determine the right side, which is negative k times y. Well, negative k times y is negative k times c times e to the power of negative kx. We have now shown that dy dx is equal to negative ky. This verifies the general solution is y of x. Next, take the second order differential equation. The second derivative of y with respect to x equals negative k squared y for some constant k greater than zero. The general solution for this equation is y of x equals c sub one cosine kx plus c sub two sine kx. And again, let's go ahead and verify the solution by determining the second derivative of y with respect to x, and then we'll determine negative k squared times y. We begin by determining the first derivative. The first derivative is equal to the derivative of c sub one cosine kx plus the derivative of c sub two sine kx and the derivative of c sub one cosine kx is equal to c sub one times negative sine kx times k, applying the chain rule, which we can write as negative k c sub one sine kx, and the derivative of c sub two sine kx is equal to c sub two cosine kx times k, which we can write as plus k c sub two cosine kx. And now we need to determine the second derivative, which is the derivative of the first derivative. Differentiating the first derivative, the derivative of negative k c sub one sine kx is equal to negative k c sub one cosine kx times k, which we can write as negative k squared c sub one cosine kx. And the derivative of k c sub two cosine kx is equal to k c sub two negative sine kx times k, which gives us minus k squared c sub two sine kx. Next we determine negative k squared y, Negative k squared y is equal to negative k squared times y of x, distributing at negative k squared. We have negative k squared c sub one cosine kx minus k squared sine kx. And notice y double prime is equal to negative k squared y, and therefore we've shown the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to negative k squared y. And finally, for our last equation, we have the second order differential equation the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to k squared y for some constant k greater than zero. Here the general solution can take two forms. The general solution can be y of x equals c sub one e to the power of kx plus c sub two e to the power of negative kx or y of x equals d sub one hyperbolic cosine kx plus d sub two hyperbolic sine kx. And below we have the exponential definitions of hyperbolic cosine x and hyperbolic sine x. 
Again, these are called hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine. These functions are sometimes easier to work with than exponentials. They have some nice familiar properties such as hyperbolic cosine zero equals one and hyperbolic sine zero equals zero, as well as the derivative of hyperbolic cosine x equals hyperbolic sine x, and the derivative of hyperbolic sine x is equal to hyperbolic cosine x. Let's go ahead and verify the solution y of x equals d sub one hyperbolic cosine kx plus d sub two hyperbolic sine kx. To find the first and second derivatives, we do have to apply the chain rule, meaning we have to use the derivative formulas shown here in the blue box on the right. Applying the chain rule, the derivative of d sub one hyperbolic cosine kx is equal to k times d sub one times hyperbolic sine kx plus the derivative of d sub two hyperbolic sine kx with respect to x is equal to k times d sub two times hyperbolic cosine kx. And then to find the second derivative, we differentiate the first derivative. I'll let you go ahead and check this. The second derivative is equal to k squared d sub one hyperbolic cosine kx plus k squared d sub two hyperbolic sine kx. The next step is to determine k squared times y, where y is the general solution y of x. Distributing k squared, notice the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to k squared y, verifying y of x is a general solution to the given differential equation. I hope you found this helpful.